I wanted to do a video for you today on how to not float your quilt. I wanted to do a video on how I was taught on putting a quilt on top of my long arm, which is putting all the leaders on the long arm, meaning putting the leaders on the back fabric and a leader on the top fabric. And I wanted to share with you some of my struggles, some of my problems. Uh, I hope you like this video. See you in a minute. Bye. Okay, so what I wanted to do here is show you what it looks like to float a quilt. This is how I float my quilt. And I'm also going to show you the tail end of my quilt top, that there's no leaders on it whatsoever, and how it's kind of loose. Here I'm also showing you my two bars. This is considered the back leader bar for your back fabric, and this is also the leader bar for your quilt top. This is how Gamel has it set up. They have names on the canvases so you don't get confused, even though I would still get confused because, you know, I don't do this often. So what you do is you loosen that canvas and you go ahead and feed it between those two bars. Then after you do that, you go through your whole system, like you see me here, the end of your machine and pull that canvas all the way through. Once you have done this, you're going to flip your canvas over your bar and what's going to what this is going to do is give you some control when you're zipping your back fabric. Then you're going to get your back fabric and you're going to zip it all the way down to the end of your leaders. And what this is going to do is going to give you the ability to go ahead and put your back fabric onto your long arm. As I'm rolling that leader, I try to make sure that everything is in alignment. As you roll the leader, the fabric kind of sags a little bit, and so you need to make sure that you pull it as tight as you possibly can so your back fabric doesn't sag. Now one of the reasons I do this is I pull it as tight as I can because I want my back fabric to be really taut. I also do this on the opposite end. Sometimes it folds in and it pleats and it does some weird stuff. So be mindful that you pull the fabric and try to pull it as taut as you can so that your back fabric lays really taut so when you put the batting and the quilt top it has a good foundation to sit on. So I wanted to share with you some of the reasons why I do not like using all three leaders on my long arm. One of them is I really found a horrible, miserable time trying to put the batting in between those bars. All right, so here I'm showing you where the batting is supposed to tuck into, and it's really a pain in the butt when you're doing a king size or queen size batting. But Gamma was good to us because he created this pulley system. You pull this kind of bolt out, I don't know what it's called, and it allows this pulley area to flex forward and back. And it also is there to help you look underneath your quilt to make sure your back fabric has no pleats and make sure that your batting is nice and straight and it doesn't have any folds or pleats. But this is where I was thinking that the batting needed to go closest to the top bar, but then I changed my mind. Reason I do not like doing this, and I'm sorry I'm sharing my not reasons, it's that it was confusing. It's confusing on where do you put the batting, what bar do you put the batting through? Do you put it through this certain bar? Do you put it on the bottom of the bar? As a matter of fact, I was so confused on which bar to put it on that it was confusing. Okay, because of the confusion, I changed my mind and decided to go ahead and put the batting in the smaller area. The reason I wanted to do this is I thought that because it would be closer to the back fabric as the quilt rolled, that the batting would roll smoother with it. Um, after I got everything in line and straightened out and I put the batting to the top of the back fabric, it looked okay. It wasn't a real big problem, but it was some effort to do this. It was not as easy as it is floating your quilt top. Here I'm showing you the pulley system and exactly where I put the batting. And here I'm getting that pin and I'm pulling it inside that pin area to make sure that my back fabric goes taut. Now once you do this, it's nice and taut, and I think it looks okay. It was not horrible. It was also confusing on how to put the top leader on the quilt top. I ended up doing it three times while my daughter did it. She, we did it three times, and 
we three times did it wrong. And so we had to unsew or rip, pull it out and re-sew. So that was a pain having to do something three times. I hate that. I don't know about you, but I hate that. Okay, so here you see that my daughter went ahead and brought me the top fabric with the leader. And I thought we did it right. I pinned it and I had it all together and we found that it was wrong. Well, we pinned it backwards. It does matter how you put your leader on this area because if you do it wrong, it'll go on backwards and you don't want a quilt to quilt top backwards, you know. So here I'm showing you where I made the mistake. What I recommend is you take everything off, make sure your zipper leader is on the leader and then pin. What I made a mistake is I had the zipper leader off and I pinned without so zipping it on and that's what created some of the confusion in my mind. It was let float in the quilt top, I guess. I don't know. It just, this is what I suggest, have the zipper on. Okay, some things that I do like about this. I like the fact that my quilt top was off the floor. Beautiful, it was off the floor. The only thing I did have on the floor was the batting, but the quilt top itself was nice and rolled up. Well, it, when I put this quilt top on, nothing was nice and rolled up. It didn't roll well, but what I liked is that it was rolled off the floor and the quilt top itself was not touching my carpet in any way. So I kind of like that. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the quilt top rolled up. It's probably just me, guys. It's just probably me. It just felt like when I rolled a quilt, that as I rolled the quilt top, the batting itself was bunching up under the quilt top roll. And so that made me get a little bit agitated with the process because I had to make sure I was pulling the batting down off the bar. And it just made it... Okay, so here what you see me do is I'm releasing the quilt top bar. And well, the reason I'm doing that is because I need to go ahead and tack the quilt top to the top of the quilt back. And here you see as I unrolled it that that stupid batting started coming forward with the quilt top, which made the quilt top have a lot of drag. Here you see that batting. I got so upset here. I had to tuck it in and it was in a tighter area it seemed because the quilt top had a lot more thickness and as I was pulling the batting my daughter had to help me and this is where I started stretching the batting. So if you have cheap batting this is where you're going to ruin it. Here I'm pulling the quilt top up getting it in line and I was getting ready to go ahead and just stitch it down. Another thing I do like about this process is that once I sewed the top seam on the quilt top, the quilt itself became very taut and very kind of pulled in a way that um, I didn't have, I did iron, but it, it seemed like when I pulled the fabric, it aligned it better. Okay, so here you see me, I release the back bar on the top and I'm starching the daylights out of this fabric and I'm going to go and iron and straighten it as much as I possibly can. I'm basting everything down and I don't want to be perfect here. I just want it down. Once I have it tacked down to the back fabric and the batting, then I get to the more detail. I do like the tautness of it. I didn't have to use those magnets to kind of make sure the fabric was nice and laid flat and taut. So this is where I'm going to baste on the sides and then after I do this I'm going to go ahead and tighten that top bar where the top quilt is and I'm going to really tighten it down. I also found that when I was rolling the quilt top as I was quilting it that it was really hard to make sure that the quilt batting wasn't pleating inside the sandwich and I just having to unpin those two bars was a pain in the butt, which it's a great idea. Gamel did a great job in doing that for us that we were able to go ahead and and unpin that area so that you can make sure that the batting is straight and your back fabric. But it was just a little bit monotonous. You see this? That's because it didn't roll right and the batting was getting caught to it. As a matter of fact, when I put it in the bars and I did have the quilt top 
finally sewn on, I noticed that I was tugging too much on the batting because I couldn't control it from the position that it was in that I kind of thinned it out and that was really a pain. Okay, here you see where when we were pulling that batting, we thinned it out and I'm also showing you what it looks like in the end after you're almost finished with the quilt. It doesn't look horrible, but it needs some work. What I found is removing it from the leader was to my benefit at this point because it was kind of warping the quilt and pulling it kind of weird. It wasn't that the quilt was bad. It was just the way the quilt top leader was pulling on the bottom fabric. Here you see me starching the quilt and then I went ahead and I basted it down and I ironed it and it was pretty straight. It was just the way it was rolling on that leader. And here I'm just showing you what it looks like. I guess what I really wanted to share is however you put your quilt on your machine, um, it's really preference. For me, this is a little bit rigorous. It was, it was restricting for me. Uh, the quilt top being on a leader made it hard to roll for me. It, it made it a little bit monotonous, having to deal with the batting and all those factors just made it a little bit rigorous for me. I even felt it was weird because there's so much liberty when you have it floating. You can lift the top in the batting and you could just like, like a butterfly flutter through it. But when it was on the leader, um, looking under there was a little bit monotonous. It was a little restrictive. It was just a little bit more difficult. And I really do think that's not necessarily that it's a wrong way of doing it. Because I know a lot of people love this way of putting their long arms on the quilt. I think for me, it's just lack of practice. And I also already have another way of doing it. So, you know, we're, we're people that like what we like. And we just don't want to change the process. And so in the process of change, we are challenging the change. We are fighting against change. And so I don't know if that's one of the reasons why I just didn't like this. It, for me, it sucked. So I just wanted to share with you how I put the, um, how I did this, how I just not enjoyed it, but I got done. And so I really do hope you like this video on how to put your quilt top on a leader bar the way I was originally taught how to do it kind of kind of kind of what I love about this guys is that you don't have to do it how the maker intended it to be done you can do it your way and I think that's what's beautiful about quilting and piecing um, everything can be done that fits you and so I really do thank you for taking your time and watching this video, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.